I am Carl Andres, and I am the director of The Tribute Artist. Now, this play deals with a lot of issues, but at the same point, isn't about the issues, it's more about what goes on in life. Can you talk to more talk about that and talk about what it's like to direct that? Well, this play, yes, it does. It touches on a lot of issues. Essentially, how to what to, to what lengths would you go to hold on to a valuable piece of New York City real estate, and and what sort of uh, morality you have about such things, and uh, and at all at the same time, it's it, it's a sort of a character-based farce, sort of sort of from the Joe Orton school, and uh, in tone, and it's a lot of fun. That's for me, is pulling this all together with this wonderful cast and wonderful design team. It's really been about f keeping, uh, keeping authentic and keeping things honest and true, and that's when it's funnier. Now, I've heard this is more about be who you are, coming into yourself and accepting who you are no matter where you are. Yes, in fact, the, the sort of the main character who, who Charles Bush plays uh, gets into disguise and goes to a lot of crazy schemes to sort of hold on to his and reach his goals. And he sort of has an epiphany at one point while he's in this crazy disguise that says, the more honest you are, the more people believe you. And that's a big discovery for this character, <laughs> which is really hilarious. And, and only Charles Bush could come up with such a situation. I play Rita in The Tribute Artist by uh, Charles Bush, and I'm Julie Halston. Rita is a rather hapless, a little desperate, um, lesbian broker. Uh, desperate and lesbian do not equal each other. I'm not trying to say that. Um, but that's the description of my character. Um, and uh, The Tribute Artist is a contemporary comedy, but it's a unique product because it's Charles Bush. So there's a lot of sort of gender bender illusions. There's rapid fire dialogue. There's mistaken identities. There's a, a sort of mystery. It's about New York real estate, which is very contemporary, very. and what people will do to get it. So it's got a lot there. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a very rich stew. And uh, people have come to expect a certain thing from Charles. And the fact that we're together, because we've collaborated for 30 years, yeah. and um, it's so much fun to be back on stage with Charles. I mean, we did The Divine Sister together two years ago, and it was a big hit, and that was fantastic. But we really are excited to, and Primary Stages is a place that's sort of become like a real home for Charles's work because they commission him, yes, and they keep commissioning him, which is very nice. Um, and they're very good to us. So what's to be bad, you know what I mean? So in your character of doing real estate, have you taken into the effect all the slum landlords that are now being oh, hijacked. And hijacked, and yes. I, I mean, the thing that's interesting is that you realize how desperate people are for New York City real estate and the schemes that get involved and, um, you know, what constitutes you know, luxury, mid-luxury, not luxury, you know, bad, good, you know. New York City real estate has always been a, a, a prime situation, but I think... It's like winning the lottery. It really is. It's that golden ring, and um, mo now more than ever. Right. And I remember in the 80s it was, but I thought, well, maybe there'll be a dip. There's never a dip in New York City real estate. It's still the greatest city on the planet. Does it go into the fact that at one point people used to read the obituaries to find um, yes. real estate? <laughs> Yes, I remember that. there is a reference to that, and it actually goes even further. But I'm not going to give it away. But just to say that people in this play are doing a lot of desperate things, and death is involved. <laughs> <laughs> in writing it, I, I wanted to uh, make it just a, well, I like him the best part, but, uh, but the, you know, I like the biggest part, but I want all the other roles to be, have some real weight to them, and, and it required some, you know, fine actors, and boy, they're awfully good. They may be too good. <laughs> that Kira, well, Mary, I mean, I, Cynthia, 
Jonathan, they're all, well, Jonathan, too, I've worked with before, so I know how good he is. But these other three, they're, it's, you know, you've got to be on your metal. Are they people that you will bring into your stable? Wouldn't mind. Wouldn't mind. I hope they have a good experience with me. I think they are. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just, well, Cynthia, I've, I've always admired, you know, and she's a um, serious actress in, in, a, in, the, in the best way and uh, really trying to find colors to this part. And, 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 I, and it's wonderful when you, when you find actors who, um, who give you more than you, than you thought was actually there. You know, we, we saw a lot for Kiera's role, you know, she's supposed to be this, you know, um, uh, transgendered teenager. And we saw a lot of very good people, young, young actresses. And Did you only see actresses for this role? Y yes, yes. And, uh, but Kiera brought to it this kind of quality that I, did, where the character was not comfortable in, in his own skin and was, and I, and I thought, oh, I, I'm not even sure if, if that's, if I really put that in the play, but I should, you know, and, and I it been kind of just, it awakened, it, it inspired me. And, I, and that's wonderful when you act, have actors who do that and bring more to it than you even thought was there. Now, I'm curious about the Kira role because this is the first time that I've seen a playwright use a female for... Oh, but she's playing a, she's playing a, a biological girl who's, who is transgendered. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, she's not playing a boy who wants to be a girl. Oh, okay. no, she's, or, you know, she's um, uh, playing a, 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 a female, bio, female, a man. female who identifies with being uh, a man. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, and, and she's... Kiera, you know, um, yeah, she's just so completely um, is embodying this, because this, this boy, and she has to, you know, and, and, you know, we'd like the audience to believe what the, what the characters believe, that, they, you know, we think, at first think, just assume that, that she's a, a boy, and it's not till later that we realize that she's transgendered. Now, you managed to keep a lot of the actors that you've worked with, that you've written for, with you. Mm -hmm. um, you've kept them with you for 30-some-odd years. Yeah. Now, that's an amazing quality. How have you managed to do that? Well, um, with Julie Halston, because she's, um, we, well, she, I find it, we really inspire each other. You know, from the very beginning, we know, because Julie was sort of an actress, but not really, she was really working on Wall Street. And... She's, she's such an outrageous personality. You know, I just fell in love with her almost immediately. And, and I was in a bind. I had done this, I would written this little kind of, more of a skit than a play, Vampire Lesbians of Sodom. We, was, we did just for one weekend. It was supposed to be just one weekend in this bar in the East Village, just for fun. And then we wanted to do a second weekend and the actress who played the part didn't want to, you know, work in a place with no bathroom and no backstage and for nothing. So I was in a bind. I, was, I just wanted to do one more weekend, get it out of my system. And I, no one would do it. My, my own sister turned me down. And the last person on my list was this blonde girl that I'd met the year before in San Francisco. Who I wasn't that wild over. So I called her and she said yes. And I was sort of stuck with her. Uh, and she wasn't very good. But I, I, we all just, you know, I had this little troupe we'd put together just for this weekend, and uh, we all were so crazy about her that we were going to do another play called Theodora Shebich of Byzantium. And, uh, <laughs> and everybody said, we've got to write Julie in. So at this point, I thought, okay, well, she's so funny in real life with her Comac accent and her, all her stories about her mother and, and her, just her outlook on, on life. So I started writing it into the play. You know, and um, and so that became this great inspiration for me for the next 30 years, writing all these different roles for this different parts of her persona. And then at the same point, I inspired her to really use her personality and exploit her own personality and uh, and go into stand-up comedy, which she's been where she's been terribly successful, and be free. I think originally she might have been a little scared of the more outrageous aspects of her personality. 
and thought they maybe they were unattractive. And, I, and I, I like to think that I helped her become comfortable with herself. And in doing that, it became this great, you know, inspiration of, of my writing. What would you like people to take away from this play? What would you like for them well, I want to the, hold? Well, I want the audience to have a wild time because it's an outrageous, sexy comedy. You know, uh, it's a body comedy and goes many directions where you don't think it's going to go. Uh, but I, I also, I, I don't really like saying I have a theme because that makes it sound like I'm trying to teach somebody a lesson. But uh, I like the audience coming up, can piece it together and think, oh, you know, I think what he's, what I'm getting coming away with this is certain, um, certain things we all have in common. And, and I guess, What's interesting for me, I don't, I'm not going to say it's a theme, what's interesting for me in this play is that the character I'm playing, Jimmy, he starts off impersonating this, his dead landlady, you know, and in order to get her, keep her house, and he has to fool her relatives who haven't seen her since they were children. And he finds that the more he's himself, the more they seem to love their aunt. And so he becomes more and more just himself while he's doing this impersonation. And I, I think that maybe that's a little bit of what everybody goes through in life. We play many roles in our daily life and, and they're all aspects of who we, who we really are and we have to just accept that we're a million different people and they're all, hopefully they're all okay. Thank you. This is Susanna Bowling, and we have been with the cast of The Tribute Artist, and this was with Charles Bush. Thank you.